Okay, so I'm going to do a, a little tutorial here on a uh, how to make a multiplexer with the FCPU module, well, combinator. Uh, instead of just, uh, I think you are probably realizing by now that if you send out one or a multitude of signals, it's going to be received on all the wires. Currently, there is nothing for differentiating even between the green and red wires. Uh, when you put something out, it goes to both uh, green and red. Uh, but even further than that, if you want to uh, differentiate, say you want to have like a set of signals, if you want to like address, say, a, um, like a given station or a given vehicle or something like that, and then give it a whole bunch of data that you want to do, like change different values or something like that, or uh, give it a command or something like that, say if you're using uh, something like AI, advanced AI, which I definitely recommend you use. Because uh, you can you can do all kinds of stuff uh, with that. I'll you know do some tutorials and stuff like that later on how you can use this and con use AI in conjunction with FCPU because they really are made for each other almost. <coughs> Anyways, what I'm going to show here is how to uh, use this thing as if it were a multiplexer. And what I'll do is I'll use things that are uh, I would call key signals, uh, just like a normal multiplexer. A uh, normal multiplexer will use like a one or a zero or a sequence of some kind of binary value to address a given line that's going to uh, switch to and communicate on and then none of the other lines will uh, will hear or at least repeat it. Uh, you can look at multiplexer for more information. There's a few ways of doing it, but uh, here I'm just going to be using a given value. Kind of, I think this is what they would call packet switching, uh, if I'm right, where you just uh, where you use a given signal as an address. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, one key addresses. In this case, uh, this is going to be my uh, key right here. This is what I'll do to refer to uh, this line right here. So this line, as you can see, uh, isn't activated, and it's only going to activate when uh, it receives this signal along with whatever other data. So the way I have this set up right now is that this will kick on if like the blue signal is greater than zero and same thing with these other three colors here, purple, uh, green, and uh, what was it, red? So these things won't, these color signals won't activate unless, of course, I have this uh, little address uh, key signal here. Because, of course, uh, just to, it's kind of like an emulation of, say, you have different stations that uh, can receive different signals, like you want to send so much wood or iron ore or some crap like that, or whatever you want to use, because there's only so many signals you can go with. Uh, this right here would be your way of uh, addressing a specific station, specific whatever your heart's desired. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go here through FCPU, uh, clear everything out, don't need to do that. But uh, just going to do it anyways. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I just move uh, these three, the, well not the three, but these four different colors here into the uh, memory buffer. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put out a, uh, what I would call a packet. If you want to look that up, look up packet uh, based switching. That's what all uh, internet communications and uh, modern telecommunications, including your cell phone, is based on, is what are called packets, which are basically strings of uh, data. So one part of the packet will be your address, another part will be like, you know, maybe some configuration specifications like read, write, whatever the hell it is, depending on what protocol you're using. And then there's you're going to be your data and uh, maybe some error correction codes or some other BS. But uh, we're not going to have any losses in our lines, so we don't need to worry about error correction as opposed to what you do with wireless or TCP or UDP. I know we're getting off topic here, but that's kind of how that whole world works. And to emulate that here with FCPU, I'm just going to use a uh, addressing or key signal and uh, your data. So we're just going to have keys and we're going to have data. That's all uh, this system is going to be using. So now that we have our data, uh, I could pump this out. And of course, it's not going to work because we don't have the key signal. So I'm going to say, move the entire vector. In other words, everything in memory channel 1, I'm going to, with this command, x move out 1, m1. I'm going to say, move all this stuff into the output buffer. Right? So I'm going to do this, go to this. There we go. And now it is putting it out. And if I hover here over the circuit connection box, you can see over here that uh, 
the signals are being put out, but nothing is going off, right? Because it's uh, being locked away. You don't want interference, you don't want other side effects, as they would call in the software world. You don't want side effects at all. So now uh, we're going to create a, a key signal, pop that into the uh, output right here, which is going to be read as a scalar value because it's a singular value. So X move is a vector based one and that'll only show up in your, uh, scale, your uh, scalar output buffer. And of course your X move only puts it out into the vector outputs. Uh, output signals basically sums it all up. It, it combines everything in your everything in your scalar uh, buffer and everything in your vector buffer gets added up and sent out. In, well, not yeah, it does get added up and sent out into your output signals. So if you're wondering what the difference between these three are, uh, this is whatever is individually uh, sent to the output buffer, like you saw right here. Or if I had like a whole list of stuff I would move out. It would still show up in Scalar. Uh, I think I might have covered this in memory. I'm not sure. Uh, if anything done with XMove, you know, anything from the uh, memories uh, units that you're pumping out just all is vector. It shows up here in output vector. And output signals is just all the stuff getting sent out. In other words, what actually matters because whatever's being received is going to be here. I mean, you can send this stuff over. I mean, this isn't the only thing being received uh, on the output. Yeah, the only thing these the output vector and scalar are for is just to help you with debugging. As far as the outside world is concerned, this is what it looks like and this is all that it knows or cares about. So, yeah, just a quick little lesson. This is what is actually seen. This is right here is more or less for debugging to know exactly what the hell is being sent out via the scalar commands or vector commands. Anyways, moving on, I'm uh, going to clear the output. Actually, going to clear everything here, clear the memory out too. Uh, anyways, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show another signal and show that basically numerical values also count. That, you know, you could easily create these combination CT signals, you know, constant type of signal here and uh, it will be read just the same uh, through your output wire. And that's all created there. Go to M1. So just create all this stuff here. Got the key, key signal and three data values. Pop that out. And there we go. So what this is doing right now is this is reading. This is uh, Santa's uh, Nixie tube uh, mod right here. Definitely recommend this one as well. As, yeah, this, Santa's Nixie tubes, and the uh, connection box. I totally recommend this if you want to work with the circuit network. Anyway, so there's 1,523 units of petroleum gas that is being received here and showing up as a numerical value as well. And because the B signal is, in fact, positive, it's going through. And yeah, I have my blue and my uh, yellow signal. Uh, the reason why it's all blue rather than blue and yellow is it has to do with um, the use colors thing here. So it says if multiple colors are present, only one of them will be used. Usually it's the last one that you throw out, so just keep that in mind. Yep, that is, yeah, I, I remember running this before here. Yeah, so usually the last color signal you send out is going to be the color that all the other lights pick up on, even if you have multiple color signals. Okay, so welcome to the uh, next part of this uh, tutorial here where I'm going to be going through a few things. Uh, main one is going to be like just uh, how to use this thing as a remote switch, how to use the FCPU for that. So you could put your control, I mean you could send uh, different signals like I just showed with uh, FCPU, but you can also use it to uh, control signals that are flowing through a different area. So say you have like a data stream from your factories or whatnot, your different train stations or whatever, and you want to filter that through. Well, you can do that with your FCPU. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show not only can you control it just like I uh, controlled these two things, uh, but also you could delegate it. So if you want to have, uh, in this case, I'm going to show you a two key setup. You can you can tier this to your heart's desire. You can do whatever you want. Uh, tier this out to as many things as you, uh, as many different layers as you want. Just remember there is a 256 uh, signal limit uh, 
with FCPU, you can send up to 256 signals out of this thing. So just keep that in mind if you want to go absolutely insane with the amount of sublayers that you want to uh, delegate out. Or you could just, you know, pop down even more of these things, eh, whatever. Yeah, you can do that too. They're pretty friendly on the uh, UPS uh, on your updates per second. So, you know, you can go nuts with these things and use as many signals as you want, theoretically. Or until your uh, computer has a heart attack. I don't know. <coughs> It's your choice. Anyhow, so I'm just going to do like a little basic two channel thing here. So I have two different channels, just like here, but it's going to be controlled by two different keys. So this way, what you can do is not only can you switch this on uh, and send your data through, but you can also tell that you can also reroute it. So you can activate this, but you can also route the thing as well through different uh, things. Okay, so I'm just going to run the thing through here. Going to pop in the first key. Going to pop in the uh, next key. First key for the uh, first row and also for the second row. Just to have these as outputs. And just to go out through here. And going to move this to the output to activate the first row. So as you can see here, I have this activated as well as this now activated. Since I now have this little radiation hazard symbol. And as you can see, just the data from here is uh, setting off or not setting off different uh, lights because this isn't present in the data. So now I'm just going to pump out the uh, third one here. We have the third register, which is going to be uh, activating the second channel. So you can see it running both in parallel. And as you can see, it's running uh, the two in parallel. Okay, so. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how you can control your individual little signals. And the way you do that is you just turn it on or turn it off uh, through the scalar mode. So if you want to switch on a specific uh, channel or sub-channel or something like that, in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the uh, top channel through this uh, radiation symbol. And the way, of course, you disable that is you can set this equal to zero or you can just straight up clear the specific uh, memory location. In this case, I'm going to clear the uh, specific memory location, which is going to be output uh, buffer yeah, position 2, because that's where this radiation signal is located in the output buffer. So output uh, 2, which is called, you know, uh, address is out 2. I'm going to say clear this, and it'll get rid of that signal. And, of course, this will turn off, but since it's now pumping, but it's, since it's still pumping the signals X and 7, down this wire all at the same time without having to switch on or off this is still remaining active so i can turn things on i can turn stuff off right you can individually tell uh different lines to turn on or turn off nothing has to reset nothing has to go weird or whatever and you could just flick these things on like light switches if you wanted to or you could wipe out uh, entire things it's all up to you whatever squirrely logic you want to run through this thing but yeah so yeah, you can turn on and turn off different things while, yeah, you could have different lines uh, on and while at the same time switching things uh, on or off. So everything will remain on until you turn it off. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that concludes the uh, end of this little tutorial for the Muxer uh, circuit. Uh, I'm, if you look in the description, in addition to the chapters, because I put chapters in my videos, uh, in case you didn't notice, for some reason YouTube is not showing the chapters in the timeline, so it's not uh, super easy to uh, navigate just yet. I guess because I'm not like a partner channel or something, it doesn't give me a priority in putting those chapters in, even though in the description the chapters to each video are listed. But uh, anyways, that aside, I also have the blueprint for this uh, FCPU, uh, script included. So I have the script, I have the blueprint, all that uploaded on Factorio Prints. If you look in the description, I'll have a link below. And you can actually uh, import this. I will not say so much download, because all you're going to do is Factorio Prints just allows you to copy the uh, string for your blueprint, go in, import it, you know, paste it, import it, and you'll have access to this whole thing here. Uh, just remember that this thing uses, of course, FCPU as a mod, and it also uses uh, Santa's Nixie Tube. You, you don't need this. I mean, if you import this blueprint without Santa's Nixie Tube, it'll just delete these two. 
but uh, it also uses the uh, connection boxes, which I do highly recommend just in general for screwing around with circuits because you can reroute things without the play without having to play with uh, power poles. These are very useful to uh, work with. But like I said, just with the same thing with the Nixie tubes, if you don't have this mod installed for your connection boxes, no worries. It's just going to disconnect, you know, um, pretty much just the Nixie tubes from the looks of it. Yeah, because I have a separate wire here going to these uh, lights. Yeah, the connection boxes here are more or less just to keep the wires from draping over the lights when they're activated. So it's not blocking the view of the lights. Anyways, uh, yeah. So... Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments about using this little setup, whether it's uh, using this thing as a remote switch or just directly turning on, turning off different uh, combinators or different sections of your base, whatever you want to do here as a little uh, switcher or multiplexer. And also if you have any ideas for how to mess around with this thing. Uh, I'm always into uh, things like different switching logics, uh, switching fabric, stuff like that as well as analog computing. Those are the two things I really like to mess around with is reconfiguration and analog computing. Okay, so I uh, hope you have a good day. I hope you have learned something. All right, well, uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.